we will go ahead and get started. Um, so this month's webinar is online intake implementation. Um, thank you all for joining us. Uh, we would like to go ahead and just share some really quick housekeeping rules. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Otherwise, we do have a section for questions at the end. So that would be great if you could save them um, and ask them. Um, you can go ahead and unmute yourself at that point and ask them directly to Laura or I. Speaking of Laura, um, my, she is going to be our um, case study expert today and will share her um, experience with uh, legal ADC's online implementation. Um, and myself, I'm Rucha Sandel, uh, project coordinator at Just Tech. Um, I've been helping out with all sorts of different online intake implementations since I've joined. And I used to work with Laura previously. And so um, we, we have some history together and um, and would love to share our, our thoughts and uh, discussions about the online intake implementation. So for today's agenda, um, we'd like to just briefly cover what an online intake is <clears throat> and then get into kind of the project management of an online intake implementation that typically goes ahead and starts with initiating the project. Um, and if uh, this, this series of um, sections on how to implement a project are also in LSN TAP's project management toolkit, which I'm wondering, Shelly, if you can provide them the link to that in the, in the chat, that would be great. Um, but similar to most projects, online intakes start with the initiating the project. Uh, you move on to planning the project working the project, monitoring the project, and closing the project. Online intake implementations also follow this progress, um, although I will say that closing the project is slightly unique to um, online intake since it never really technically closes, um, but we will get into that a little bit later. A quick overview of online intakes. Um, Online intakes are either hosted on websites or website modules that use, um, that use a series of different questions to guide applicants through an, uh, through an application for legal services and allows them to provide uh, information about their legal matter. It allows them to request legal services. Um, and it also is an easier way for them to provide information to the organization without either having to call in if they're busy. Um, it allows them to do it during their hours when they're available. Um, it hopefully where you know lessens the burden of staff and uh, people at your organization who are designated to answering um, intake phone calls. And online intakes generally will provide um, applicants with more specific information and resources for individuals who don't really fully understand their legal issues. All in all, online intakes are a more um, modern way of getting the information from applicants that you need on their time and also hopefully lessens the burden for your staff. Typically during online implementation, you'll go through the selection phase of where you choose which program or tool to host your intake on. Um, then you get into the planning of your branch logic for your online intake. And this includes, you know, choosing which questions you want posted on your online intake, what questions might um, cause an applicant to be ineligible or eligible for your services if you're gonna have um, resources or kick out messages provided at the end. Um, and then you get into, once you've had that planned out, you get into the building and configuring your intake. Um, we do like to stress the importance of usability testing because again, online intakes are designed for your applicants and that you want it to be something that they'll be able to understand and fully be able to use 
after that. We're hoping that you'll go a lot, go live with your online intake. And then, like you said, there's not technically a close to the project, but more of a ongoing maintenance for online intakes where you um, have the online intake go live and start to see what changes or things that you might need to improve on, or just as time goes on, your program, um, your program's eligibility uh, might change. And so you might have to go ahead and continuously update your online intake. And I'll go ahead and have Laura introduce herself again, but she's the IT director for Legal ADC. And she's gonna go ahead and talk to us a little bit about Legal ADC's online intake implementation how they went, went about um, planning for it and how they implemented it and how they're using it right now. Hi, everyone. I'm glad y'all could join us today for this. Um, like Richa said, I'm the IT director here at Legal Aid DC, and I've been here about 10 years. Uh, we are currently at about 94 staff, and we have six uh, units here so far. Um, we are looking to expand that. Um, and this has been an ongoing project now for several years, but, um, it's been a good one. Thank you. Um, we'll get right into the, uh, initiating the project. Um, so Laura, when Legal ADC was trying to implement an online intake tool, what were you looking to uh, get out of that? And were there, were there any specific problems you were hoping to address from implementing an online intake? So uh, there were a couple of things we were hoping to do with this. One was um, to have another avenue for applicants to reach us and get help. Like Rucha said in the beginning, um, you know, clients sometimes their free time is you know late at night or early in the morning when you know we're not available and this gives them an opportunity to um you know apply for our services on their time um another thing we were kind of hoping to um take care of where the, the units were hoping this would eliminate the need to follow up with applicants um you know by making our questions as detailed as possible but that did not pan out um, but mainly it was just to give our applicants another avenue for reaching us. Did you um, have any process when implementing this tool and who all was involved? So um, this process actually started with um, an intake working group that we had put together here in the office just to, you know, deal with intake in general, but then it it morphed and eventually a smaller groups split off specifically for online intake. And so we basically, it included our legal director at the time, myself as the tech person, and then a representative from each of our units plus our intake unit. So um, that each unit would have a voice. Um, and that's how it started. And we kind of went from there. We um, reached out to a couple of other organizations and asked about their online intake. We, you know, had each unit tell us what they kind of wanted to get out of this. And we took it from there. Great. And when you were choosing the tool to um, develop your online intake, who all was involved in that? Was that primarily you, or was this more of a collective effort? Um, would you, are you able to speak more towards that? Especially it was, I will mm -hmm. say it was mainly me. Uh, mm -hmm. We had zero budget for this project. So um, since I was the main person that was going to have to actually implement this, um, I was, you know, generally the one who made this decision um and everyone you know because they aren't technical they were like you know if it does mainly what we want it to do you know they were fine with whatever i chose to do and again we had zero budget so they couldn't be too picky <laughs> so then um once you you started talking about implement or talked about wanting to have an online intake 
um, did you create some sort of timeline for your kickoff to your go live? And was it the timeline that you kind of anticipated in the beginning? So we had a rough timeline. Um, this was uncharted territory for us. So, you know, we weren't sure. We, we kind of gauged it six months. Um, it actually took us more than a year. I went back and looked at my calendar back then, and um, it was a little over a year to go from talking about it to soft launch. So um, be flexible on that. We knew going in that this was going to be a fluctuating end point. So, you know, none of us were too upset with it, but um, just kind of keep that in mind that you're going to run into things that you weren't expecting. And, you know, plus the rest of your job sometimes gets in the way too. So uh, right. just kind of keep that in mind and keep, keep it fluid. Agreed. I think a lot of us wear a lot of different multiple hats um, in these roles. And so exactly very important yeah. to keep in mind. Um, so speaking of that, you know, how many hours did you spend a week on this project? And did it vary by phase? Were you working on it more during certain phases versus others? So for me, it did vary by phase because we had a, a fairly long phase that was when the units were thinking about the kind of questions they wanted to have in their part of the online intake. And, and we gave them several weeks to get that done. So I did some initial setup with um, the tool that we decided to use, but then I had some time where I didn't have anything to do other than go to our meeting um, because the, it was in the units part. But then once we got to the part where I was actually building the forms and you know putting them out there, for the, the units to take a look at. I averaged about 20 hours a week. Um, I will say not all of those hours were within my working day because I still had my regular day job to do. And as Rucha said, we wear many hats. And when we started this project, I wore even more hats than I do now. So, um, but it was about 20 hours a week. Did you, did your working group use any sort of project management tools um, during this? We did. Um, we used Asana um, as our, our management tool because we could assign things to folks. They could, you know, put notes in there. And, and that way we kind of had a, we could had a snapshot of where things kind of stood. And um, it, and it, for those of us that need a little accountability to get things done, it was something accountable because someone else assigned me a task and I, you know, they're going to see if I didn't do it. So, um, so Asana worked really well for us. And then, well, getting into working the project, um, once you, you know, wanted to go ahead and you had your tool, um, you had to start building out your questions. So did your online intake match your regular intake questions at that time? Um, did it match the ones that were on your case management system or your walk-in walk -in form at all? So um, our walk-in form was very basic. Um, you know, it was just basic contact information, you know, what, your case fell into, you know, be it housing, consumer, whatever, and then a brief description of your problem. So we went beyond that for sure. We did have our basic contact information page, but we also collected, we collect income information. And then there's also um, some demographic information we collect, and then we go into the questions. And the questions were, that part was entirely done by the unit. They gave us what they wanted and we implement it. So some units have pretty lengthy questionnaires, whereas other units had short ones and those have changed over time. So as right. you know, the units look at them and see what's getting answered, what's not, they've changed their questionnaires over time. And um, you already spoke to this, but next question about how um, you decided which questions needed to be asked on your online intake. Was it primarily, again, the units that made the, the final say on these questions too, or did you have somebody within the working group kind of sign off on them? So the units for the, the substantive questions, those were entirely up to the units. 
the units tell, told us what they wanted and we would implement them. You know, the rest of the working group and, and you know, part of this came down to our legal director was, you know, decide, like we decided as a group whether or not we were, that was a step where we were going to collect income information or not and that kind of thing. So, um, but the substantive questions were definitely all the unit. Now, um, are you able to go ahead and talk about specifically what tool you used for your online intake? Has it changed over time? Um, are you planning on using the, the tool that you have right now going forward? So um, again, like I said, we had zero budget for this. So at the time our website was built on WordPress. And so I um, used a form plugin for WordPress called Contact Form 7 to build our initial online intake. And we used that for quite a while, um, but then we started having some problems with it as um, WordPress you know, would get updated and our, our theme would get updated and we had, and there were, there were just little tiny problems but I could never get them fixed. Um, and so I eventually reached a point where I got frustrated enough and picked a different plugin. I went with um, WP Forms and created a couple of forms in there and sent it out to the units and was like, okay, this is the problem. This is what I'm proposing. If y'all are okay, I'm going to move us to this other um, plugin for our WordPress site. And of course, no one argued with me. They were like, fine, it still does what we want it to do. And I'm like, yep. So, and it was actually uh, a little more streamlined and easier to use. So we did change to that a little over a year ago at this point, maybe a year and a half ago. So um, we intend to stick with that until um, next year where we have decided to um, implement the online intake part of legal server. So we will eventually be moving to that. Great. And if you don't mind me asking, will you still, does your working group for this online intake still exist so that when you implement to legal server, um, you'll rely on the same people, same folks or kind of the take, again, take people from each unit to help implement this new change? So our working group um, sort of morphed into our legal server group um, when we found out our old case management system was gonna go away and we mm -hmm. had to switch to something else and we picked legal server. So um, we don't have a representative from every unit, but we do have some unit reps in our group and that will continue to be our group. But when we do start implementing our um, online intake with legal server, we will reach out to the groups to assign somebody in their group to help with this transition so that they can make sure that their unit is getting what they need out of this. Um, and another part of working the project is the usability testing. So we talked about how this online intake is you know, designed for our applicants. And so making sure that the questions that are presented on the online intake um, are readable and understood can be understood by applicants is really important. How did you all um, test the, the complexity of your online intake? So once we reach a point where we had everything pretty much the way we wanted, we opened it up to the staff, um, but focused on getting our legal assistants to go through these things and our interns with the idea that our interns are, you know, they aren't in this every day, they aren't doing intakes. And so they would, you know, have insight or questions or, you know, whatever would come up. And then also we have a community advisory council that does include some current clients and some former clients. And we also had them do this too, so that we could get some feedback from the client community. Um, but also over time, we do get feedback from applicants if you know they've run into a problem or something, they do, you know, some of them will reach out and tell us what their problem was, which is great because then we know it's happening and can fix it. So, uh, but that's basically what we did. Right, and just so that um, others know too, that I, I've also um, heard of projects where people have reached out to applicants or the client community 
and provide them with sort um, some sort of incentives to help out with the usability testing as well, where they'll get applicants to go through the um, online intake to give them feedback before they go live. Um, and so that has been just reaching out to applicants in the client community in general to get feedback on the intake is really important um, because they will definitely catch things that uh, staff members or people who've been on the working group don't. Um, yes, so, I agree with that. And following up with that, was this like your usability testing? Is it a one-time thing or do you uh, purposely test your online intake often? Or like you mentioned, you have applicants come to you when they've had issues with the application? We, um, we haven't done a formal um, test in a while. Part of that is knowing that we're going to be migrating over to legal servers online intake. So, um, you know, we're going to save that for when we want that tested. But um, if we do make a substantial, you know, a, a large change, we at least reach out to the staff and interns to take a look at it um, just to make sure there's like no, no glaring problems. Um, and But like I said, the applicants, you know, we appreciate that they reach out and a lot of them are not afraid to. So in a sense, we have ongoing testing just by the sheer fact that people are using it every day. So. Using. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the go live phase of working the project. Um, is like, what, if any, change management strategies does your organization use to, to prepare your staff for going live with an online intake or yeah, were there any? So process wise, nothing really changed. Um, the, you know, this only brought in another way for an intake to come into us. But once it was here, it still went through the same process that any other intake would go through. So that part didn't really change for us. We did prepare the units for the fact that there would be more intakes um, since there was this other way for folks to get us that was, you know, available 24 seven, which meant, you know, like I said earlier, people can take care of it outside of regular working hours. And so we did prepare them for that, but the actual process stayed the same until COVID. <laughs> and then yeah. everything changed then. Um, how did you get the, the word spread out to your client community? Um, or where do you, again, you said you mentioned earlier on you had a sort of a soft launch. Um, did that change from after you decided that you were, you felt more comfortable to advertise your online intake? So we were still in our soft launch phase when uh, COVID started. And so that we decided then that we would advertise since we were no longer open for in-person intake. And so we really needed this to be out there. So uh, we, the, the main things we did was we um, let the DC consortium know, which is a consortium of, you know, legal services and pro bono attorneys and things like that local here in DC. Um, we also had our community advisory council um, advertise in their networks and their, they do outreach, they do a lot of outreach in the neighborhood. So they definitely started to include all the information for our online intake with all of their interactions. And of course we let our fellow legal services um, organizations here in town also know that, oh, this is now something available too, since we do a lot of referrals and things back and forth between us. And of course, word of mouth. Um, getting into monitoring the projects, um, how did your project team, your working group, keep track of any issues you ran into throughout the process? So we used Asana still for a lot of that, but we also kept the spreadsheet and we still kind of keep the spreadsheet although that's also morphed into a legal server thing too, of just, you know, here's an issue. This is how we resolved it, um, which, you know, it was a sheet that everyone had access to. So um, we could keep track of everything. And going off of that a little, were there any specific risks that you are, are you able to highlight um, or anything that stands out um, during 
that monitoring phase that really jumped out to you aside from, you know, uh, later on when uh, the contact form wasn't working? Um, is there is there anything specific you're able to go ahead and highlight for us? Um, so a lot of it was um, the units after getting some of their intakes in, they did a lot of tweaking to their questions. Um, we did the, the biggest risk that, you know, us being attorneys, liability. So we had, we did come up with, um, for instance, we have a disclaimer that, that shows immediately when you go into our online intake. So we made sure to implement one of those. And we spent a lot of time, well, they spent a lot of time on the language of that. So that was one of the things. Um, but um, it, most of the issues were either that um, questions that the units wanted answered weren't getting answered at all or correctly, like they weren't getting what they wanted out of them. Mm -hmm. um, or it was going to, or it was a technical thing. Like we used a lot of branch logic in this. And so sometimes we would get feedback that the branch logic didn't work. And so that would confuse applicants. So those were the main things that we had to deal with in that part. And I think you briefly touched on this, but kind of getting into more of the, the data that you were collecting from your online intake, was there anything helpful from that data that helped you uh, or keep, helps you maintain your online intake right now or any other ways that you're using your data from this? Uh, we definitely collect data on this and we keep track now of, you know, if an intake came in through online or the phone or in person or, you know, through one of the other projects where we take intake, do intakes. Um, it also has helped, um, you know, we've been able to collect some demographic information as to who's more likely to use online intake and what part of the city they're in when they do that. Um, which also in conjunction with the other data we collect on our other in online intakes helps us think about where we may want to, you know, maybe open a satellite office or things like that. And it also, um, you know, just in general helps us with, with all intake information, you know, trends in the year, you know, are we getting more housing intakes in, you know, in the spring or are we getting more domestic violence at the end of the year around the holidays, you know, those kind of things too, that you know, regardless of the intake, that just in general, gives us good information. Yeah, and are you using this for um, reports or for granting purposes or? Oh, definitely. We definitely use this information for grant reports and when we apply for new grants um, because this, this is now a large chunk of our intake. And so, um, you know, it's important that somebody fund us for this. <laughs> okay. um, and we talked about closing the project and it is, it is in hyphens because um, we talk about just how iterative the online intake process is, is that even when you have gone live with it, there's just so much maintenance. And again, organizations, eligibility changes, um, your applicants that you're um, having take your online intake constantly are changing. Uh, and so even though, uh, you technically want to consider the implementation of your online intake closed. Um, it never really fully closes. But Laura, uh, when did you and Legal ADC consider your online intake project closed? Was it the soft launch or a little after that? Um, I don't think we've ever actually considered it closed okay. because we are we still make changes. So, I mean, just recently, I our housing unit decided to scrap all of their questions and, and slim it down to three questions from, you know, like 20 questions. So um, I don't consider it closed. I consider it stable, but there's always going to be those changes that a unit wants or, you know, we start to see a trend with applicants you know, not answering these questions or not doing something else that we may decide to, you know, change how it looks or how it 
reacts or something. So um, I don't think it's ever really closed. But if if I had to pick a time, I would say, you know, when COVID hit and we advertised it out to the community. So, you know, nice, clean date. Everyone knows that date. <laughs> and since we talk about just, again, it being continuous and not technically closing, how are you able to maintain your online intake, web, um, online intake? And who was responsible for when you kind of were making things go live? Um, or did you have a plan in place for how you were going to improve on the site? Or is that something else, else that you kind of figured out along the way that, oh, this project is never technically closing? <laughs> Um, so it was always assumed that I would maintain the the web part tech side of it because it was now part of our website, which I maintained that then too. Um, we had a woman in our intake unit who um, helped with um, creating the forms and all of that. And so we, um, so she still helps with that. So if like when a unit wants to change something, that doesn't always fall to me because she's able to do it too. So I tend to end up doing more of the, hey, this form is doing this weird thing. Can you figure out why it's doing that? So, um, and then the, the, the actual editing of substantive stuff usually falls to Dina, but we work closely together. We, you know, we triage and tackle it all together, but, um, it's definitely something you need to think about is for that ongoing maintenance, who's, whose responsibility is that? And, you know, make sure that there is somebody that can take care of it. And if the person you're thinking about for that role is not included in the implementation of it, they should be. So um, mm -hmm. just keep kind of keep that in mind too. Uh, and Joe's going to spiral off and ask another question. Was there anybody who's involved in the maintenance of your intake right now that wasn't part of the implementation process? Um, no. So okay. Dina and I are still the main ones. Um, we, we did recently redo our website. However, the online intake portion did not get redone um, because I actually separated it out. So um, we still take care of that. And um, going forward, when we do migrate over to the legal server um, online intake, everyone in the legal server group will know how to make changes and maintain it and do the things that need to be done. So it won't just fall on me and Dina anymore. There will be you know, seven of us that will be able to take care of things right. as they come up. Okay. And great thing is because it's legal server, if there's a technical issue, we get to go to them for help. <laughs> and um, I will also mention that they do have documentation involved in the process as well. And so um, were, were you able to create any sort of documentation for uh, keeping up with your online intake? Or again, since you were the, tech, the main technical <laughs> lead on this, um, it has mainly fallen on you. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> so I do not have any formal documentation on how to make changes or um, anything like that. Um, I should probably do that. Might be a good idea. Um, and actually in general, you know, just in case I fell off the face of the earth tomorrow that, you know, and so did Dina, somebody would have an inkling of what to do. So um, it's probably a good idea. And thankfully, when we move to legal server, we'll have that. So um, and just some final thoughts on the project. Were there what were the main challenges that you all faced? Um, anything specific? So like you've got here, the units um, there were a couple of units that came back to us with very extensive questionnaires for this. And, you know, we as a group, you know, agreed that an applicant's gonna get bored with this or frustrated with something that long. So um, getting those units to kind of pare down what they were asking, 
you know, the units really thought this was going to be the thing that would eliminate any sort of follow up with an applicant. It doesn't. It doesn't matter how many questions you put on there that you think is going to fix it. They're always not either not going to answer the question or, and if you make the question required, they're just going to give up or they're going to give you not the kind of answer you were looking for. So, um, you know, one, you know, we needed to get them to narrow down those questions and, you know, accept the fact that this was not going to eliminate that follow-up step. Um, the other problem is because we didn't have a budget, there were things that the units wanted this to do that just wasn't going to happen. I'm, I'm not a coder. I'm not a developer. So we were also limited by my technical skills. And so um, if there are fancy flashy things that you want, you may consider hiring a developer to do this that A, has the time and the knowledge to do it. So, you know, keep that in mind too. Um, and I will say the budget thing was really, really, I, you know, I, I never hesitated to, to be like, well, if we had some money, we could do X, Y, and Z. So um, yeah, some money would be great. Yeah, and you bring up, again, a great point of like, if you uh, are going to go ahead and plan for additional features, like somebody in the chat had, I think, mentioned um, uh, any follow-up or scheduling features that you may have had or processes that you may have had. Uh, with a lot of case management systems, some of these additional um, features are additional prices, too. And so making sure that you budget for those features and additional yeah. add-ons is, is important. Um, yeah. We're... What were some of the, the great things that came out of your online intake? Um, so when COVID came along, we were so thankful that we had done this and had this to offer to the applicant community because we were no longer able to do in-person intake, which was the main way that we did intake before then. So um, that's been one of the biggest things is you know, this uh, this new avenue for them, you know, became much bigger than we expected because of COVID. Um, and, well, you know, as I think everyone's experienced, COVID in general just changed a lot of things for us. And having online intake has made it easier for us to get intakes done. It's taken some load off of the staff that used to have to do intake. Um, so overall, in, in general, it's been a really good addition to what we do and um, don't intend to get rid of it at any time. Thank you so much for just sharing your thoughts and your experiences with um, this implementation. Um, it's just, it, it's an, a tool that, again, you kind of uh, worked through through trial and error. You have rounds of and it's again an iterative process, rounds of edits, and constantly edit, um, making sure that the questions that you're asking are relevant to the applicants um, and it's capturing the information that you want. When I'm going to go ahead and open it up to uh, questions from people, and um, I do want to go ahead and quickly address that there was a question in the chat um, regarding any callback scheduling functionality. Um, so did you all have any processes or implementation or sorry, processes or sort of any add-ons or plugins that you used for calling back? So no, um, that's one of those things that was limited by my technical inexperience. Um, so that falls, so for us, that falls on the intake unit. Once they get an online intake and they go through it, they do an initial conflict check. And if that's okay, they you know, take a look at it and um, get it to a point where we could, if it's something that we could help with to get it to someone in the unit that would, you know, if it's that kind of case. So the, in, so it falls on the intake unit that they do any callbacks, any follow-ups initially. Um, and I believe, and I may be wrong, we have it written somewhere on there that they should call us if they have questions about an online intake that's been submitted. So, um, but we had nothing formal or part of the process now. And I will say that um, I have seen at Legal Server, there's um, uh, the clinics uh, module 
which allows applicants to choose a time for um, them to have a call back basically and review their intake. Uh, there's also the ability to schedule um, for applicants to schedule appointments through the scheduling appointments feature in Google Server. Uh, there's third party uh, there's third party features like time trace, which allow you to have the same um, functionality. But again, it's a third third party feature. So at the end of an application, um, an applicant will go ahead and get a a link where they have to click into and schedule an appointment that way. So there are there are features and and um, solutions for workarounds if you don't want to have a specific you know, kick out message saying, uh, providing your hotline number or anything like that. But that is definitely something to look into. Um, another question in the chat is, did you attempt to offer questions in languages other than English? So um, we do have the option on the website to pick another language. Um, we just use Google Translate. Um, however, we are going to um, include the extra modules for legal server so that we can have it in Spanish and Amharic, which are the two other languages that we get applicant applications in the most. So, um, so yeah, just by virtue of it being a website and that we can add that language feature. Now, we we do understand that Google Translate is not perfect and that Sometimes it translates things not correctly, but um, it's it's been usable enough that we get applications and we get applications that, you know, bulk of the questions are answered and answered, you know, enough to give us an idea of what's going on. Right. And uh, have you found any sort of speak spot for the number of questions that you can ask? Um, I am sure that the units have found that sweet spot and it definitely is varied by unit. For instance, like I said, the, the housing unit scrapped their 20 question questionnaire and, and knocked it down to three. Um, we have also made changes um, in the uh, consumer unit questionnaire that is also kind of narrowed down, removed some questions. So um, I'm going to say yes. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm just based on what Dina and I have been asked to change and update. Um, I'm going to say at least the consumer and housing unit did find that sweet spot because since we've made the changes they asked, thinking it was going to change how things were going, they have been very happy. So um, it may take a while, but I, I think anyone can find a nice sweet spot to get where you're going to get everything you need from the applicant and have them not just give up or, you know, whatever the case may be. Any other questions from folks? Um, feel free to unmute yourselves or keep asking them in the chat. Um, but we did want to go ahead and uh, give you an opportunity to hear Laura's experiences um, about through the, their implementation of the online intake. Just as a technology becomes more and more critical of like how we work and function, um, I think it's just a great way to kind of see how other people and other folks are are using um, tools to, you know, make things a little bit easier for our applicants. Um, hopefully, provide them with better information and additional resources. And yeah, just want to stress the importance of online intakes. And maybe if you're not using an online intake now, we'll consider using and implementing an online intake going forward. Can I add just a couple more things? Sure. So I will tell you that one of the conversations we had in one of our meetings was um, when we were struggling with the units to get questions and things was, um, was this actually the right way to go about this project? Um, should we consider changing directions? And I, you know, at that point when our legal director asked that, everyone looked at me because at that point I had put in a lot of work into this. And my immediate response was, if this is not working for us, I have no problem 
switching gears, scrapping it all together, whatever the case may be. Don't be afraid of that. Um, I had no problem giving up all that work I had done because my goal was to have this work for us. And it's not about me and the work I put in, it's about us and our client community. So think about that too, that just please don't be afraid to reevaluate mid process. You know, if you, if something's going on and you just don't think it's going to work, great, stop, reevaluate. Re so um, I just want to put that out there because we did talk about that. And even though we ultimately would have went ahead in the direction we were going, um, we did stop and have a serious conversation about it. So please don't hesitate to think about that too. Okay. Uh, I think we have one more question in the chat from Dina. Uh, can you guesstimate how many more intakes you've seen now? I cannot, but I will tell you um, in the beginning, because we were still on a soft launch, um, it wasn't a ton, but it was a fair amount. But once we advertised and because of COVID, there was a significant increase in the number of intakes. And um, and I think part of that also was before COVID, we required people to come in person to do an intake. And I, I feel like that was a hindrance for a lot of people doing an intake with us. So um, because we've taken away that requirement and COVID forced us to do that, um, we have had a significant number of intakes because I feel like more people can do an intake with us. Did yeah. you have to change your staffing in any way because of the increase in intakes or the at least the process of how the so intakes we, are handled? We did change some of our processes and we did expand our intake unit um, to start accommodating the extra intakes we were doing, yes. Well, thank you so much, Laura. Um, if anybody else has any other questions, feel free to ask them. Stick around for a couple minutes, but that is it for today. Um, again, just really hope that uh, you'll ask any questions if you have them. And oh, one other question is, what's the size of your intake unit? So um, our intake unit is one, two, three, four, five, six people, um, which includes three intake specialists and um, a senior intake coordinator. However, two of those intake specialist positions are vacant at the moment, um, and we have not filled them yet. So I will tell you right now, the intake unit's a little stressed. Um, <laughs> although we're getting ready to close intake for the, through the end of the year next week. But, um, but yes, it's six people at the moment. And could be more, should be more, in my opinion. Awesome. Well, we will go ahead and have this recording up on LSN Tops. Uh, YouTube uh, channel. It'll be up on their website and we'll go ahead and share the slides as well. Um, I'll go ahead and give out my email address, but feel free to reach out to me with any questions and uh, hope you all had learned something and were able to take something away from this. So thank you so much for joining us.